I'm starting with a with a little quote uh, uh, that um, I think our colleagues uh, uh, online can see. It says that in the past, censorship um, worked by preventing access to information or restricting it uh, or making it hard to access information. While in the new uh, ecology, in the new environment of digital, um, censorship works by flooding people with sometimes irrelevant information and that uh, the true value these days is actually knowing uh, what to pay attention to. And so this is something that uh, I subscribe to and uh, something that informs um, um, our work here in G GFMD. And unfortunately, this is one of the trends that are not working in favor of professional journalism. And this morning we had a wonderful session with our Albanian colleagues here, and we heard from them that all over the uh, world, even though we are seeing some of the best journalism being produced today, long-term odds for sustainability of journalism are working against us. And so there are two broad areas that we look at uh, as a network, as a GFMD network. One is, of course, international development, international cooperation. And COVID-19 and, uh, of course, the climate, um, climate change that we are all facing has shown us that a lot of institutions and a lot of international cooperation is very fragile. And that just when we need to act together, uh, we are seeing a lot of unilateral, uh, closed national responses to the crisis that is global. And unfortunately, many institutions and actors continue to implement what we would call securitized responses to those multiple crises, protecting their own security and interest uh, that they see their people have, while protection of civic spaces, uh, more accountable societies, and finally, respect of the human rights, including freedom of expression and media freedom, is very often an add-on, a siloed kind of sector. And all these areas are still not human rights by design. We have been making for years an argument why investing in journalism and media is important for development, for democracy, for having prosperous and informed societies. But somehow we seem to be stuck at that 500 million mark of investing into media development. And uh, if you look at what's happening in addressing the problems of our information ecosystems, countering uh, violent extremism online, uh, online harms approaches, stratcom approaches are gaining momentum instead of investing in journalism. Other development areas also rarely recognize relevance of professional reporting for achieving their goals. That's on the international development side. So we are facing a lot of challenges there. And uh, without the united action, it's really difficult to expect that these things are ch will change. And also without united action and cooperation to address not only our narrow media development field, but the whole development sector, especially those actors that participate in the sustainable development goals processes. The second area that we uh, look at, especially in the long term, and we have, see, we have heard this morning also, that if we don't find a sustainable model in the digital space for journalism, uh, there's not going to be any international assistance action, any donor, any funder, any state that can uh, help journalism survive as a system uh, if there is no uh, model in digital that also not supports it, but at least creates equal footing and equal playing field for it. Unfortunately, in the digital sphere, the small nonprofit community investigative uh, newsrooms are not often recognized by the system. So our architecture is in a way skewed against them. And so I like looking at figures, as you know, and when you look at, at those digital spaces, unfortunately, large disinformation operations, influences, troll and content farms earn much more than any credible content producer online. And many of our members and partners, as I said this morning, experienced removal of their content and accounts. Um, uh, they don't have anyone to, to call 
they don't get, get to notice, they don't have appeal process. And even when their content or counts are reinstated, the story that they have published is, uh, is old, old news. And the investment that they made into producing that story is unfortunately uh, lost money. These are only two major influence in policy in area. Of course, we, we will go into details of some of those uh, tomorrow in our strategic uh, sessions. And so, as I said, while international development continues to be uh, relevant and one of the most important priorities for our network, looking at digital, I think, will be a must for us to secure future uh, of journalism long term. So where is the difficulties? Even though the media development and journalism support community have extraordinary track record in advocating for human rights, freedom of expression, policy and advocacy, there are very few organizations that have the resources and expertise to really be successful in advocating for media freedom and sustainability survival of journalism. And I have to say, uh, having participated in a lot of discussions over the last five years, believe it or not, most of them are today in this room, online, and are our members. Sometimes I think we don't give ourselves enough credit, but trust me when I say that a lot of small journalism, investigative reporting, local uh, networks, those people that local communities depend on for life-saving information sometimes, they depend on us to represent them in international circles. They depend on us not being competitive, coming together and thinking that every project, everything that we do needs to have a link to the, this need and needs to kind of reconsider how is this project contributing to this long-term fight of journalism. And I hope that we will come together even stronger over the next five years to do this and to make at least small changes. So what a journey has been over the last five years. Huh? <laughs> As you will see from our activity reports, and uh, a new network analysis that we've done. Our members, um, membership, general membership is growing. They remain dedicated and loyal to GFMD. You will see what they value, what they would like to see um, more of, uh, the connectedness and um, more connections between members in all parts of the world. Uh, it has improved since um, 2016. Um, and it's distributed more equally. So they're not only a couple of kind of major organizations that communicate with the rest, but still when we look at uh, our network, there is a clear North-South divide where resources for impacting the whole network are still of course uh, in the global North. And this is something that we are working together to, to address and to create not only spaces at the table and hear those voices from small communities and all over the world, but also to empower them, to give them resources and to give them opportunities and work together with them to bring all their issues to the table and find ways to, to address them. I had a couple more things to say, but my seven minutes is up. Um, over the last five years, as you will see, GFMD members, steering committee, executive committee, our secretariat's team with generous support from our partners. Um, some of them are with us online and in the room, have succeeded in making GFMD a trusted partner and I would like to thank a strong organization that is here to stay. Thank you all so much for being part of our network.